great magician. Your clothes are red! Hey you guys, today I'm gonna have my buddy Steven Bridges give you guys some insight on some street magic and along the way I might pop in and give my little two cents and add on to what he said for uh, the psychological reasons for why what he's saying not only relates to street magic but can also help you with uh, your daily lives and interactions with people, job interviews, uh, you know, relationships, and everything in between. So. Take it away, Stephen Bridges. Hey guys, firstly, thanks very much to Jack120 for having me on his channel. My name's Stephen Bridges, I'm a magician, I do a lot of street magic, I do magic on YouTube at youtube.com slash stephenbridgestv. I'm here to share with you some street magic tips to make the process of doing street magic easier for you and to make your magic a little bit better. Firstly, I know that we refer to it as street magic, but street magic really encompasses performing magic anywhere when you're out and about, whether that's in the streets, in a shopping center, in a park. So which of those locations works best? Personally, for me, after having performed a lot of street magic, I find the best people to do street magic for are people that are sitting down or they're not moving. If someone's out doing the shopping and they're walking down the street, they're in a different frame of mind to what you want them to be in to perform for. You can go to those people and stop them and perform magic for them, and it can work really well, but you'll find a lot of the time you'll find it quite difficult to stop those spectators, and they won't be in the right mindset to enjoy good magic. So for me now, I just find it's so much more effective to approach people that are sat on a bench, for example, or my favorite location, in a park. In a park, when it's a sunny day and there's loads of people just sat on the grass having picnics, they are the best people to perform magic for. They're relaxed, they're having a good time, they're in the perfect mindset to see some magic. And I find that performing for those kind of people as opposed to people that are walking in the street is infinitely easier and you'll have an infinitely better performance. So my first tip to sum up is to perform for people that are sitting down or they're at least not moving. As I say, you can still perform for people that are walking, but if you want to maximize the amount of people that are going to be prepared to watch some magic, I would recommend people that are sitting down or not moving. When I first started doing street magic about 10 years ago, I found it terrifying to walk up to spectators and do magic for them. I remember when me and my cameraman would be going out, we'd spend the first hour trying to get me to have the courage to go up to groups and perform for them. So regarding that, my first bit of advice is, if you see a group that you think could be appropriate for street magic, go up to them straight away. Do not hesitate, do not debate it, just be like, oh, there's a group, and then go up to them. Other than that, it's just a case of going up to lots of groups and doing this really regularly. I've performed a lot of street magic now, and it doesn't really phase me to go up to spectators anymore. Often I'll find the first group that I perform for, I feel a little bit nervous, but I can still just walk up to them and perform. So the more that you do this, the less scared you will be of performing street magic. Having a camera on you somehow makes it easier to perform magic as well to approach people, giving an excuse as to why you're performing magic. Oh, we're filming it, I'm practicing for X, Y, or Z, and it's going to make your performance overall better. It'll make the crowd feel that they should react subconsciously without actually feeling forced to. They'll just be more open to, hey, I'm seeing something special because why are they filming it? It must be uh, pretty good. So definitely try filming versus not filming, and I think you'll notice within the first three times of filming with the camera that it's easier to approach people and will make your performance better. Another thing that a lot of magicians can get into is they can start judging the group too much. They can look at different groups and go, ah, oh, that group wouldn't work, they wouldn't be that appropriate, they don't look very fun. They'll start making excuses. To use a cliche though, you can't judge a group by its cover. I find a lot of the times that some groups that look a little bit moody and not particularly friendly can be really friendly. And some groups that look really friendly and energetic can just not be. It's a really strange dynamic, so you've just got to go for a group. When you see a group of people, just go up to them. You don't know if they're going to be good or not until you start speaking to them. So when you approach a group to perform for them, what should you say? What should you do? When I go to a group, I'll pretty much say something along these lines. Hey guys, how's it going? Yeah, sorry to bother you. I know it's like a really nice day and you're sitting down and chilling and it's a little bit strange. But my name's Steven. This is my mate John. Basically, I'm a magician. I'm going around showing some people some magic. We're filming it. Would you guys like to see some magic? That is pretty much what I say. I don't have it scripted. I don't say the exact same thing every time. Usually I'll go up to them, ask them how they're doing, and from that response, I will sort of change what I'm doing a bit. One thing I tend to do is apologize for bothering them as I want to be polite. And I'm also really casual. I'm really friendly. I'm not very... It's just a very casual thing. As if I was asking for directions... I'm not being serious, I'm not being too formal, I'm not being too high energy. I'm just being very casual. Hey guys, how's it going? Yeah, I know this is a bit strange. Uh, I'm Steven, this is my mate John. We're filming some magic. That's the kind of tone I work with and I find it works a lot better for me. When I'm filming street magic these days, I'm nearly always filming it. So I will mention that I'm filming it in my introduction. But I do have a tip for you if you're not filming magic of how to approach this. What I used to say was something along the lines of, I'm in a magic competition and I'm rehearsing my act. Do you guys want to see some magic? I would use the fact I was in a competition as a way to justify why I was going around showing magic to people. Some of you 
you may want to use this, some of you may not, but I know a lot of people get nervous when they go to people when they think they don't really have a reason to be doing it. So if you say that you're rehearsing for a show or you're rehearsing for a competition, it can make the spectators feel like, oh, he's in a competition, he must be pretty good, which gives you that little bit of uh, preemptive proof that you're good at what you do, which is quite useful. Again, this is one of those things that not just helps with magic, but helps with life, is the idea of you giving someone a reason why you're doing something. There have been studies where people have gone to an airport and have said, hey, can I cut in front of you without a reason why? And they're like, no, you can't cut in front of me. But even uh, the idea of like, hey, can I cut in front of you? I'm about to miss my flight. The idea that you're giving them a reason why, it makes them feel like they owe you something because you gave them information that helped them understand why you're doing something. So this why you're doing something can be added to anything. Hey, can I show you magic trick because I'm practicing for a contest coming up? Could be a complete lie, but this tends to work with a lot of other things, not just performing magic. You should try it out. Generally though, you want to be casual, you want to be friendly, and you want to be polite. You don't want to be in performer mode, you just want to be a nice, normal person. Just be very nice to them, be very polite, just be friendly. You know, you can crack jokes, things like that. That's the attitude you want to have. People respond well to that and they'll be up for you performing for them. But what do you do if people seem a little bit resistant, they seem a little bit tense, and you're not sure if they actually want to see any magic or not? One of the things that I do, and I find this works really well, whether I'm working professionally as a magician or if I'm doing street magic or whenever, it works so well as I say a phrase, something along the lines of this. You guys seem a little bit unsure, so how about I show you one quick thing. If you like it, I can stick around. If not, I'll leave you today, no worries. I find that this phrase works really well to to get people just to be like, yeah, all right, show us one quick thing. The key here is that you're saying one quick thing. You're not putting too much pressure on them. They don't have to worry about you sticking around for too long or overstaying your welcome. And once again, you're being friendly, you're being relaxed. The vast majority of the time, people will say yes after I say this. And if they don't, then do not take it personally. You shouldn't take any kind of rejection personally. They've got a lot of preconceptions of what a magician is like, so they're using that to judge you on. So they might have seen a really terrible magician and that puts them off wanting to see magic. Also, the people might be having a bad day. They might just be having a terrible day and they're not in the mood for entertainment. So don't take it personally if the group says no, just move on to the next group and don't let it phase you. So this idea of a false time restraint can work in a lot of different factors. It's great for magic. The idea of giving someone a, a reason that you're not going to stick around for too long. Hey guys, don't mean to take up much of your time. I have my friends over here, but I want to ask you your quick opinion on something. It's called the false time restraint because you're saying that you can't stick around for too long, even though if need be, if they like you, you can stay there for much longer. This is great for both magic and relationships because you don't want to seem as a weird guy who's going to take up most of their time or really any of their time, maybe a minute at most. So you give them the idea of, hey, I can't stick around for too long. I'm actually on my way out of here, but I wanted to get your guys' opinion on something really quick. I'm doing this thing, so is it cool if I show you something really quick? Or open up with a question, a opinion, so they people love giving their opinions on stuff. So once that they've agreed that they want to see some magic, I'll spend quite a bit of time positioning the spectators where I want them to be. Don't be afraid to move people around, especially if you're filming. You want to make sure that everyone's positioned right so that when you film the magic, it's going to look good. When I'm filming magic, I'll usually have one camera guy and I'll have myself in the center of the group and the other people in a semicircle around me. And I find that works really well. I'll regularly be asking my cameraman if the frame is right, if it looks good and if anyone needs to move. And a lot of the time you'll find you need to ask people to move a little bit closer and a little bit closer. It's good to have your spectators all sat quite close together because that ups the energy levels of a group. If you've got a lot of spectators spread out quite a lot, it's low energy, but if everyone's quite close, reactions just generally tend to be stronger. Which does bring me to another quick point. It's good to do magic for larger groups because the energy levels are so much higher, especially if you're filming and you want big reactions, large groups work really well. It's the same reason why if you go to the movie theater and see a comedy and it's a packed house and it's brand new and you're seeing it for the first time, you tend to laugh a little more because the whole audience is laughing. Whereas if you saw the movie a month later and it was more spaced out and there were less people there, you probably wouldn't laugh as much. The same with going to a sports arena that's packed and you guys are only two inches apart from each other and you react to an exciting game or event versus a more spread out arena where you may be off more to yourself and people may feel uncomfortable really immersing themselves into what they're witnessing. Try uh, performing to larger groups of people and you'll find that it's actually easier and more fun. Another thing that I'd recommend is that if you're filming, do some kind of warm-up trick before you do the main trick you want to capture on video. 
Sometimes it takes spectators a little bit of a while to warm up, so if you do a first trick, that'll get them in a bit more of a mood, and it's sort of a bit more energetic and ready to see some good magic, and then they'll react better when you do your main trick. My last tip regarding filming magic is to make sure that the cameraman knows to not stop filming until you tell him. A lot of the time, spectators will be a little bit reserved until they think the camera's off them, and then they will react. I find that if you just keep filming for a little bit longer, that's when you get some of the best reactions. Thank you very much for watching. I know there's a lot of people out there that are a little bit scared to do street magic, or when they do it, they're not quite sure of the right approach. So I hope this video has helped you out. Feel free to hit that like button if you did like it. My name's Stephen Bridges. I do magic at youtube.com slash stephenbridgestv. I don't do tutorials, but if you like watching magic performances, come over and check it out. Thank you, Stephen Bridges, for giving that insight and on street performing, street magic on my channel. I would love for you guys at home, if you dug that, check out Stephen Bridges TV, his YouTube channel link in the description as well as check out uh, Stephen Hammer you know two Stevens it's Stephen Hammer's birthday today so go to youtube.com slash hammer WGM he's on his way to get 5,000 subscribers he's been a, a longtime buddy of mine so give him some birthday love I will be in Orlando Florida next week for playlist live I'll probably be walking around performing magic interacting with people and maybe filming some videos you never know Giving you guys an update on the CXX playing cards on Kickstarter. I'm kind of doing a referral type program, an affiliate type program, if you will, where I'll be giving away three specialty decks from my uh, collection here. So I'm not sure which it will be, but as you can see, I have a, a lot of decks of cards here, including uh, some rounders, and there's some uh, Empire cards here from Lee McKenzie a bunch of other uh, unique cards and as the days go on I will uh, reveal which three will be added but it's only gonna last for a week so if you want to enter this refer the Kickstarter program share it with a friend who might be interested in the CXX deck of cards once they back it have them send me a message on Kickstarter saying hey uh, Jerry Mathers sent me once I get the message from the new backer that you referred them I will send both you and the new backer to digital wallpapers and posters and your name for referring them will be slipped into a hat and at the end of the week February 6 I will pick a name out from that hat and I will send uh, that lucky random person three of my specialty decks of cards and you don't know what it's gonna be it's gonna be kinda like a magic grab bag with uh, some fancy decks. And the more people you refer, maybe you refer three people. Well, your name gets dropped into the hat three times, increasing your chances to win this. You never know. Maybe you're the only one to refer someone, making it slim pickings. Easy way to scoop up three cool decks of cards. Once it gets to 500 backers, I'll be doing a, uh, a new contest, a bigger contest. Thanks for watching again. I'm Jarek120, teaching you powerful magic, integrable social dynamics. Check out the Kickstarter project. Try to get in this contest. Be inspired to learn, aspire to disturb, and always rise above.